Hey guys, Turk here. I hope you're having a good one. If you've been living under a rock this past month, the PS5 Pro has finally hit the store shelves. And now that we're in holiday season, many are hyped to get their hands on the best console on the market. Last week, we reviewed the console. And despite what you think I might have said, I did recommend the console for some use cases. Primarily, it's hard to beat the $700 price point simplicity, and the improved feature set is a promising advancement over the based console. But if you followed my channel for any amount of time, you guys know I'm a PC gamer at heart. But the consoles do pique my fancy. I'm a bit of a mad scientist trying to figure out just what PC config is equivalent to the consoles. This passion of mine has gotten me into some heat over on X, which I thought I'd covered well enough in previous videos. But today, now that we have hardware in hand, we're going to put a bow on this conversation. How powerful is the PS5 Pro? I covered the equivalence topic a month ago when Digital Foundry started getting their hands on the console. I ultimately concluded that the RTX 4070 is just in a different performance class of hardware altogether. However, many online still disagree. So it's time to put the claims to the test. I've got three different GPUs to size up against the PS5 Pro. From AMD, we've got the RDNA 2 based RX 6800. On paper, it's pretty close with render speeds above the advertised Pro's spec, but ray tracing performance is lagging behind a little bit. You could also consider the RX 7700 XT, but I don't have hands on that device. Also, AMD has yet to deliver an AI driven upscaler, which might just disqualify it from consideration altogether. For Nvidia, I've got the RTX 3070. It's kind of the opposite of the 6800, with lower rasterization performance, but improved RT. And it also includes an AI upscaler. The major downside to this card is the lack of sufficient VRAM. It is workable, but some of the game's textures these days require a bit much of the card. And for good measure, we've got the RTX 4070. Digital Foundry says it's roughly 40% faster than the Pro in Alan Wake 2, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Now, the problem with comparing PCs to consoles is threefold. First, we have to compare like for like against the quality settings. Fortunately, I've got a back catalog of console equivalent settings from Digital Foundry, so I'll be using those to dial in. Also, we do have to keep in mind some of the PC options might be more or less than what the console will deliver, but we'll take that on a case by case basis. Next is resolution. The concept of resolution can be more complex as game developers can fine tune their console application better than their PC counterpart. Sometimes using resolutions like 1224p or 1620p. On PC, we typically only have standard 16 by 9 ratios. Unless an upscaler enables percentage based tuning, many of these resolutions are just impossible to achieve. The last problem for comparison is the utilization of dynamic resolution scaling. If setting a custom resolution wasn't enough of a problem for PC, the console gets even better features with DRS. If the load on the GPU is too much for the console, the game can dynamically adjust its resolution to maintain its frame rate target. For example, if you stare up at the sky, sure, you might hit 4K resolution, but if you start to look down at a fog laden area or an intense particle fight, that resolution will drop like a rock. However, the performance will still stay at its target. So when comparing the PC to the console, we've got to consider that as well. So how the heck do we address all three of these at the same time? Now, I've been doing a lot of digging and there's a hidden gem here on YouTube, and that's the user Brazil Pixel. Through their adaptations of the teardrop program, not only can we monitor the frame time and frame rate of a video capture, Brazil Pixel's tool can also decipher the internal resolution of the frame. This is fantastic. We can now see the actual resolution in real time, and we don't have to look back at Digital Foundry's antiquated manual pixel measurement methodology. So we're armed with an initial set of GPUs and a thorough analysis tool. Let's put it all to rest. How powerful is the PS5 Pro? The first game I want to look at is Alan Wake 2. 
the developers gave us a clear definition of the settings they use on the PS5 Pro. Fortunately, they are also using static resolutions for their performance and quality modes. This configuration gives us a chance to look at Brazil Pixel's results in a best case scenario. Performance mode on the Pro takes the previous quality mode and ramps it up to 11, I mean 60 FPS. The unfortunate side effect here is that the resolution goes down to a grim 864p, which is always a problematic starting point. In quality mode, the Pro utilizes the same graphic settings as before and introduces ray trace reflections into the mix. The game maintains a 1224p resolution at 30 FPS with the additional settings. We can't fine tune these PC's exact resolutions without the use of mods, but we can run at 1080p and 720p for performance mode. As for quality mode, we can run at 1256p with DLSS in balanced mode, which is pretty darn close. In the town area, these targets work as well as we would hope on the PS5 Pro. 60 FPS in performance and 30 FPS in quality mode. So how about that 3070? In performance mode, the circuit around town at 1080p shows a single dip into the 50s, suggesting that we are above the PS5's targets, and 720p reinforces the target with plenty of margin to spare. Nevertheless, we also look to be CPU limited here. So how about quality mode? With minimal reflections in this route, 50 FPS shows that we've got a bit of room to spare. So let's drive on over to Cauldron Lake. On the Pro, we're already sub 50 FPS heading out of the Witch's Hut in performance mode as we head down to the lake, with an average frame rate down at the bottom middle of your screen of around 55 FPS. The 3070 at 1080p hits the mid 40s coming out of the hut, and 720p manages to hang close to the Pro's performance. Quality mode follows suit, staying comfortably above 30 FPS in the top half of the run, but as soon as we get to the lake, we come strikingly close to 30 FPS. Keep in mind, on PC, we're running with higher post-processing settings, better ray trace reflections, and an ever so slightly higher resolution. So I'd say all three of these factors keep us confirmed. Now let's put the 6800 under the microscope. We'll just jump straight into the forest section for this, as that's the clear performance bottleneck. In performance mode at 1080p, out of the hut, we hit the upper 40s, and as we get to the first bend, we're comfortably in the 50s. And just like the RTX 3070, we drop back into the upper 40s once we get close to the water. But at 720p, we stay in that upper 50 sweet spot throughout the entire run, suggesting that if we could engage 864p, we would be an excellent match for the pro's performance. Quality mode with RT is the biggest test for the 6800. And as expected, it does suffer a bit. In the upper half of the run, we're in the mid 30s, even with some spikes close to 40. But the reflections and alpha effects above the lake tank the performance. There's a roughly eight second stretch through the lake with performance in the mid 20s. Putting both of the GPUs side by side, what we mentioned earlier pans out. The 3070 handles RT better, while the 6800 is faster with raw rasterization. So, how about the RTX 4070? In quality mode, we have mid 40s coming out of the hut, moving up to the lower 50s at the halfway point and mid to lower 40s in the water. To put that in PS5 Pro terms, the 4070 is at least 43% faster than the Pro. Let's continue to drive the point home with F124. I don't have access to a 4K X 120Hz capture card, so I'm going to focus on quality mode, with the PS5 Pro effectively running the ultra high preset with only RT shadows disabled. All the other RT effects are in play. F1 is known for its superb performance, and it presents our first proper foray into analysis with dynamic resolution scaling in play. Watching Brazil Pixel's video, he runs the Great Britain map with the TV pod camera view. This configuration differs from DF's use of Monaco, but we'll get to that track in short order. Off the starting line, we see resolutions between 1210p and 1320p with an effective max resolution of 1440p. In PC terms, this resolution hovers between DLSS in quality mode and balanced mode. Now, the tricky part is to compare when the PS5 Pro would be running either of those modes 
and see where the PC equivalent GPU would be from an FPS perspective. First up, the RTX 3070. Coming out of the first hairpin corner, we hit our first sample of 1440p resolution. And would you look at that? Right at the upper 50s and with a locked 1440p, we're consistently at a higher resolution while floating between 56 and 62 FPS. Coming out of the hairpin, we're right on top of the PS5 Pro's frame rate. Into the second hairpin, we do see a dip, but within moments, we're just back on top. Keep in mind on the Pro, the resolution is dynamic, so we can't get an exact one for one here. Still, by any reasonable person's standards, this has got to be close enough. Now, let's get the RX 6800 on the grid. In the first hairpin turn, the 6800 is at 55 FPS, while the Pro is at 1390p, which is a reasonable delta in favor of the Pro. But in that second hairpin turn, the 6800 is right at 58 FPS, while the Pro hits 1440p and promptly drops down to 1349p. So across the track, these two contenders trade blows, with the 6800 averaging 52 FPS over the entire run versus 1366p of the Pro. This result just looks so close, but it does tend to push in favor of the PS5 Pro. As for the RTX 4070, what more is there to say? At a static 1440p, the card averages 72 FPS across the entire run, proving it would not scale anywhere close to the PS5 Pro's performance. So, how about Monaco? It is a heavier map than Great Britain. According to my conversations with Oliver from Digital Foundry, he counted pixels between 1080p and 1188p, suggesting we'd be between DLSS in balanced and performance mode. As I showed in my last video, the RX 6800 struggles in the close hairpin turn with the cars densely packed together, but it opens up coming into the tunnel. The 3070 fares better here, maintaining 60 FPS in balanced mode, confirming our results that the 3070 handles the RT better than the AMD card. So at least in F124, the 3070 is a solid equivalent GPU, while the 6800 lags behind a few frames, but it's within the striking distance. Now let's take a closer look at a Game of the Year nominee, Elden Ring. On the console, performance mode runs a not-so-steady 60 FPS, anywhere between 1944p and 4K, with an average resolution of 2082p. The console maintains a steady 4K resolution in quality mode, and FPS dips between 51 and 60 FPS. How does RT impact the game? Resolution is stuck to 1620p and averages around 45 FPS in this brief test run. So, PC, how does that fare? Essentially, both prioritized frame rate and quality modes use the same quality settings, with a minor delta being motion blur being on or off, and reflection quality goes from like medium to high. So the significant contributor here is the resolution. And of course, RT mode is comparable to the higher RT presets. Let's dial in these settings and focus on the 3070. Without RT and setting a static 4K resolution, our PC equivalent GPU runs about 10% faster than the Pro at points. Still, neither solution can maintain a locked 60 FPS. This is because Elden Ring is just not a well-optimized game. Engaging RT and dropping our render resolution to 1800p does see our setup dip to right above 30 FPS, where the Pro would be around 44. But the 3070 here is running at a higher resolution so it's not a complete dunk on the 3070. If we dial back to 1440p, the performance improves to about 49 FPS, which is about 10% faster than the Pro. So if we split the difference, guys, this is pretty dang close. Getting any closer would be splitting hairs and pretty pedantic, given we're already at this level of analysis. How about the 6800? I'll be focusing on the RT mode here, and interestingly enough, at 1800p, we are at 37 FPS compared to the 3070's 30 FPS. And if we dial back to 1440p, we see similar results to the RTX 3070. This suggests that the struggle session we had in F124, the performance gap just isn't as wide in Elden Ring. How about that 4070? At 1800p in RT mode, we are at 54 FPS, 
or 23% faster than the PS5 Pro while driving 23% more pixels. Now, that might not line up perfectly with Digital Foundry's results, but it is blatantly obvious that the 4070 is faster in both regards. Now, here's a bit of a curveball, Callisto Protocol. Just this past week, Striking Distance announced that they will be updating their game with PS5 Pro support for better 4K 60 and an 8K 30 FPS mode, including full ray tracing, whatever that means. Over the past few years, this game has encountered incredible issues on PC regarding memory management that has plagued the platform. So I wanted to see just how well it would perform in preparation for that release. Luckily, Brazil Pixel also has this analysis on their channel with impressive results on the Pro. Unfortunately, this was taken before the patch was available, but it's clearly noted in their video. In performance mode, the Pro can maintain 60 FPS on average while staying really close to 4K native output. Sure, there are dips in his results, but the game recovers very quickly. Compared to the base model, the Pro can render up to 78% more pixels per second. The problem with this clip is that the game's performance is very sporadic, and it's difficult to get in-action one-for-one comparable clips. Luckily, they did capture the intro cinematic to the Lost Chapter. The Pro can maintain an average resolution of 1512p or 70% of the 4K resolution. And by luck, this game also enables us to hit percentage-based scaling with the use of Unreal Engine's TAA upscaling tech. The problem is that Digital Foundry doesn't have a console equivalent setting video for Callisto, so I'm going to use the high preset with all of the RT options enabled. Let's dial that in on the PC and see how we do. On the RTX 3070, right out of the gate, we float between 57 and 63 FPS, effectively matching the PS5 Pro's original performance mode. Even if we go to the end of the clip, 1620p still hits above 60 FPS so we are right on target. The RX 6800 runs very similar, and it's actually marginally better than the 3070. It bottoms out at 58 FPS, and even the 1620 clip only bottoms out at 51 FPS, landing above 60 towards the end of the clip. So what would it look like with the new patch in place? According to Digital Foundry, the results they've counted for the new RT performance mode are between 1296p and 1440p or anywhere in the 60 to 70% render scale. Back to the 3070 with the same clip, this time with RT engaged. A minimum FPS of 58 at 1296p suggests that we are well within the expected range. As expected, the RX 6800 struggles a bit more, with 52 FPS for the minimum frame rate, but the bulk of the clip is closer to 60 FPS than it is actually closer to 52. Admittedly, it's not as close as the 3070, but still, guys, this is really dang close. Let's quickly look at the 4070 at 1512p, well above Digital Foundry's claimed range. Yeah, if you're still thinking the PS5 Pro is equivalent to an RTX 4070, I guess just let me know down in the comments. Bottom line with Callisto Protocol, the game is terribly optimized on the PC, and if we run these same settings in actual gameplay, I would expect the render floor for the PS5 Pro to be closer to 1080p. I've got to say, now that we've looked at this topic with two different videos and quite of a variety of games, I can't be more thorough in a comparison than I've shown you today. We've looked at both enhanced and non-enhanced games. We've accounted for all the quality settings. We've even accounted for resolutions, both static and dynamically driven. Considering all of these variables, we have a clear message of the PS5 Pro's equivalent GPU. First, let's look at the RX 6800. When it comes to rasterization, AMD's GPUs are right on target, typically driving resolutions at or above the PS5 Pro. However, RT performance is its Achilles heel, typically coming in maybe 5% slower than the Pro in some games. Yeah, you heard me right, in some games. Callisto Protocol is a notable exception mainly because it is an AMD-sponsored game. Now, I don't want to get into that here, but suffice it to say, the RX 6800 is, on average, equivalent to the Pro. But like I said in the intro, the lack of AI upscaling might be a deal-breaker for you, 
So take that for what it's worth. Now, the star of the show has got to be the RTX 3070. Not only does it keep pace in raw rasterization performance, but it manages to hold up under heavy RT scenarios as well. F124's Monaco map, Alan Wake's Lake, and the Callisto Protocol's upcoming patch all work well on the 3070. Despite its 8GB VRAM buffer, the 3070 has the horsepower and flexibility to game with acceptable settings within a console's operating window. As for the 4070, I hope that this video has put that talking point to rest. The NVIDIA card is faster, it handles RT better, and can drive more pixels at the same console settings as the Pro. Keep in mind, we also have even more features in the 4070 that we haven't even turned on here. The Pro has to cut corners with DRS, while the 4070 can just set it and forget it. So after this analysis, where do we go from here? We have our equivalent GPUs, and we understand the limits of the PS5 Pro. Next week, I want to put all of this data into context and debate the console versus PC gamer mentality as we close out 2024. I appreciate you guys sticking to the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Consider subscribing to the channel if you like this type of content. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.